Good evening. My name is Sean Prince. I am your uh, presenter for the, for the day on isometric drawing grade 12. Uh, I hope that you are going to participate in this. This is quite a, a, a difficult or also a, a very long session. So your attention uh, must really be quite good. There's a few things that we are going to talk about, which we did on grade uh, 10, 11, and 12 now. Uh, so the only thing that is going to happen now is that uh, uh, you are going to do more complex drawings in the future. Uh, the Afrikaans elements are going to afford it. It's going to be a moment here. It's going to be a really ingewikkelde type of van concept, maar as jy jou bedding vir mekaar hou en kyk na wat ek hier gaan sê, waar ons die probleem die inlichting gaan kyk, en oefening, 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 kan jy daar van een succes met maak. We are going to do it mostly in English. I hope that some of the Afrikaans guys will understand, but in this, every now and then I will go over in the concepts and explain that in Afrikaans as well. Uh, so, right, let's start. We are going to use the textbook that you have of Johan Engelbrecht, uh, the engineering, graphic, and design for senior secondary phase throughout, and I will have references to, to most of the drawings uh, in that. Right, in grade 12, the complex drawings, the sections will now be drawn with the following characteristics. You must remember that there will always be isometric circles within the three planes. The three planes I'm talking about, the front, the top. And each time that circles will have uh, the same construction that just lie on a different plane. Uh, they will be called polygons. Those are few locuries. Few locuries, then to six of the Akanta polygons will be uh, hexagons, uh, triangular, uh, uh, and so forth. And uh, whenever that is uh, within a drawing, an orthographic drawing, you know that you will have to draw a auxiliary view. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, then something else, most of the drawings all depends on the complexity of the drawing. Sometimes a section will be asked, sometimes a section will not be asked. We talk about sections, you will also remember that uh, the, the same laws that you have uh, within the isometric, uh, within the mechanical drawings, uh, the same laws is applied uh, for hatching and sectioning within isometric drawings as well. Um, uh, for that, you must uh, use the textbook and see what is the specific uh, laws and regulations around sectional drawings. Right, let's just I'll take some, some pre-knowledge for Kenneth Ramos. You must remember that the isometric drawing is, is lying onto uh, three isometric axes. There's a 30 degree line and a 30 degree line for the one axis and the other axis, and then there's a vertical line. The moment you draw on that vertical, on that isometric line, the true lengths are measured there the true length of the drawing, the true dimensions that they talk about will be measured there. The moment you get a non-isometric line, that is when there's a line there or there or on the other side, which is not on the angle of 30, that will be the non-isometric lines. That is, for instance, a non-isometric line. That is a non-isometric line. So. Uh, it's things that you will have to take note of with a bicycle mark that you'll see me is a metric line after. Birakir, the projection symbol that you'll know again, the projection symbol in this one, it's a third angle. That means that is the front view. What I see from the front view, I project in front of the front view. If it's the first angle, what I see from the front view, I project on the opposite side of the front view. So in this case, it's that. With isometric drawing, 
uh, <clears throat> and third angle isometric drawing, there will be a reference plane direction. Uh, that reference plane direction will be the front view. Then you know that this will be the right hand side, the right hand, the right hand that you have. You'll have a top view, a top view, as you see from the top. Of course, the left view now is obscured from your vision. The back view is obscured from your vision, and as well, the bottom view is obscured from your vision. Now, there's a few things that we we must keep in mind, and that will make it easier for you to understand uh, an isometric drawing versus your uh, orthographic drawings. And that is the, the length or width of height dimensions. I don't like I, I don't like to talk about the depth dimension because the depth dimension can be at any of these faces. If there's can you see there's my projection face. If there's a a line going inside there it can be a width dimension, but it's a depth perception from this plane towards that plane or from the top i see my dimensions it's a, the length and the width dimension you see the width dimension is those ones those ones the length dimensions is those ones those ones uh, but there's also depth perception from that level that level there where that part of the object is towards that level of the part where it is. It's almost like, like an MR scanning situation. They slice the <clears throat> they slice the, 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 the image into various slices to to show the next part of the slice. If you look at the MR of the medical situation, you'll see the, the different slices which they took. And that is exactly what happens here. Uh, a slice, slice, slice of the different uh, planes that goes in, which gives you the depth perception. So if I look at that area there, the front part, that part that I see, there's a depth per perception that goes towards that area of the of the plane. And the moment you start to, 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 to get grips of that, your uh, isometric drawings or, and, and uh, becomes quite easier. Now let's look at the drawing. This drawing you'll find in your textbook. Um, and in this case, uh, it's a socket. A socket that you are going to to, 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 to draw isometric. The socket has got also a, a, a cutting plane, a cutting line. Uh, it's a third angle. That's the front view. That's the top view. And now they say, and according to certain dimensions. So again, that actually is my length dimension. The length dimension is also that dimension. That is my width dimension. The width dimension, which I find as well in this case, uh, the same uh, on, on, on the side of, of, of the drawing. The high dimensions is all this. So where do I find now my length dimensions? All these ones going in into the block will be there. Okay, so that is the length dimension. That's a depth part that goes in, in, in there. Right, now what we have to do, we start with a draw and you draw a block. We call it the block method. A block of the full square area which this will fit in that means it's 70 by 70 for the for the uh, diameter and uh, the height of this is then 35 35 10 that gives you a 50 millimeter height so you draw a first block uh, a cube of 70 by 70 by 80 high now you see on this side because there's a polygon there's a polygon exit. I will need to draw a auxiliary view. And when I do the layout of the block where this drawing will be drawn into, then I put down immediately a, a cross section or a line, etching line. This will be a circle that I had to construct on the end. 
a hexagon into that. So you can do that as what you go on. <laughs> right. Start with the drawing. We start first to draw the center lines of that specific line. Because that is where the isometric circle will fall in. Now, again, let me first immediately uh, get the concept right. An isometric circle is not an ellipse. Ellipse is a long, has got a long axis and a short axis, a main, main, main axis or auxiliary main, uh, axis, and that can be in any uh, uh, length or any dimension. But when we talk about isometric circle, it means that your radius from there to there, from there to there, from there to there, the radius is all the same. But because of its isometric circle, it will now look like an ellipse, but it's not an ellipse, it's an isometric circle. And there are certain constructions that you do to construct that uh, circle. Right. Let's start with the construction method for the isometric circle. Easy enough. You see, there's a quadrant. Uh, there's a quadrant. There's a half part of it. Let's do it on top. Half part there. Half part. Half part. Half part. On that. On the cube. That is a quarter part of the cube. Not just of four areas. So first of all, you draw a line from the obtuse angle the stomp book, not the wooden stem in the stomp. Uh, obtuse corner to correspond obtuse corner there. You draw the same on that side, and that will give you a line. Now, the same happens from this side, from top and from there. The obtuse there, the obtuse there. Okay. Then you'll find that there's a cross. On the, on the center line where they join. And that center line is now that area. So what you do now, you draw the first circle. Radius from there to there, draw the first circle. And now you go on with each of those center lines. Center lines. You draw the, the circle. There's another one, the, the, the opposite side. There's the one for the top. And there's the one for the other side. Easy enough now. If you remember that, you'll never forget how to draw an isometric circle. Now, this is an isometric circle on a horizontal plane. You will find now the same isometric circle that you do on a vertical plane or the other vertical plane. Now, to, to, to see this direction of what this uh, il, uh, um, asymmetric circle will lie. Uh, if you look at a, uh, for clearer monarchy, a, a, a chameleon, if you look at a key of chameleon hands while he, he's climbing onto a, a, a tweak, the, the right hand is pointing to the right direction. It's pointing into this direction. Your left hand is pointing into this direction this direction, and that is the direction that the circle will lie in the different planes. The moment you get on top, then you want to cross your hands and push yourself up onto the, the top of that cube, and then your hands will be lying in a horizontal position. So now I go and I do the opposite part of the ellipse. Uh, of the other uh, uh, isometric circle. The theater of the deal from the isometric circle. So, <clears throat> right. After that, because I know it's a socket, I join those lines. I join those lines, that lines, on the touch line on the outer circle, and which will give me a cylinder effect now out of the cube that I've so that is the cylinder effect that I have on the socket. Right, now I start and I have to draw somewhere here an hexagon because the hexagon lies within a uh, hexagon that they gave to you on certain sides. So how do I draw a hexagon? 
I draw a hexagon where the radius is equal, the radius is equal to one of the sides of the hexagon. There's the side which was which is given to you. Okay. Um, and, and and that side is 30 millimeters. So I draw a hexagon a circle of a radius of 30 millimeters. And out of that, you know now how to do the hexagonal uh, construction. You must make sure of where is the corners, or the, the sides, and uh, what lies the sides. So in that position is that is where the uh, sharp corners uh, across the um, lines. And this is across the flats. If we go down, we know that my hexagon will now start on this, across flats, across that, because one of the corners will be there, a flat will lie into that direction. And then you construct an hexagon. I'm sure that up till now, we're 12, you should know how to construct a hexagon. I'm not going to go into much detail of how to do that. Right. Now, the moment uh, uh, the, the, the hexagon has shown is there, you start to draw a, a square around the hexagon. And that square, you're going to add in there. That means the distance from there to there, distance from the center to there, distance from that center to there, center to that area there. That is the block. So inside this block, the hexagon is going to be. Now, why do I say now? Can you see, there will be a non-isometric line. This is your isometric lines. They will be, because they're living, lying on an angle of 30 degrees. But the moment there's a line lying in that direction, it's not an isometric line, so that won't be the true length. So how do I do that? I measure that distance, true length distance and get a mark, and get a mark on this side to find the position. And that's what I do now. You see the lines, number, uh, I just took a few lines from number five, and the distance, the distance from there to there, from there to there. Or that opposite corner there, that you construct to that position, from the center line to there, center line to there, and you construct it to get a position. And now you draw a square inside um, and you mark this distances, that distances, that distance, that distance. This one from zero to one and two to that position. And on that you'll find now the position of the hexagon. Now let's start now and decide where the section must be. You will see. Uh, the section is done from that position to the middle and out. So that means the section is that area there. Let's get to that position again. Slide. Right. So the section that you will have will be this part that you are going to do the section out. And, and, and show the inside information there, as well as the inside information of the square there. Right. First of all, now you can start and draw the outside of your drawing and in darker lines, because up till now, all the lines you did was construction lines, so that you can, uh, if you make a mistake, uh, you rub out, it's not too difficult to uh, leave uh, unnecessary untidy marks on the lines. So you start and draw the first uh, outside lines. Now, drawing the section, as we said, according to that drawing, you see that the section went, but I won't go over that area because there is something inside there, which is hexagon. But the outside of the socket will be, will be cut out. If I look at this part, there will be a square situation in here. 
that you see from the bottom of the socket where the socket spanner will fit in. Okay. And that is that basic area. So you start with a square hole. Again, what do you do with a square hole? You take the square and that distance from there to there. The distance. The distance from there to there. The distance on the bottom from there to there. Which will be an isometric line. So that can be the true distance. It's on an isometric line. That's the true distance. That is a height line. That's the true distance. And you start to show the hexagonal from the top. You measure to mark all the hexagonal marks, the, the, the points, the point where the six kant gaan, van gaan ingevoegd word, sit jy nou die diepte deel, wat jy ook op die aanse daak neem, dis die ware lengtes. En waar jy dan die diepte eindig, waar die diepte eindig, van die vlak, daar gaan weer die, uh, die symmetrische lijn verder aan terugbeweeg. En jy kom, jy maak die, dit is die ware lengte, ware lengte. En jy het jou gat opening vir die seskant. The whole depth ready for the hexagon, you already constructed. And now you start with the hexagon sides. And you do the sides as that. Number four, number four. You see number three. Number three. Number six will be number six there. Number two, that distance which you mark off. And there's the execute. Now, what do I need? Inside there, inside these ones will be lines going down to show how deep this hexagon, hexagonal hole is. He says, can't the deep the cigar. And I is here, the cell the link to Sadar is the deep the is die, is een ware lengte, omdat hy op een isometrische as gelegd. It lies on an isometric line. Ok, there is the first one. You see that length? It's the same as that one. So it's the same as that one. This one is now Take it away, it's outside of inside uh, obscure. So, in real terms, that can be a, a hidden detail, but they're not asking the hidden detail of the moment. And the 30 degree is a line, so no, it's a line parallel to that, parallel to this, two parallel lines going on that side and that will join that corner. So it's good to bring that line construction down to the total depth and bring that line and you join the two marks there. And the same happens on the other side. You draw the parallel line towards that from that angle going down and it will somewhere along there be a hidden detail. Now you start with the inside to complete the rest of it. Just where the two parts has been cut out, you'll find because that is a body of the, of the socket, is the lichaam van the sock, and I know a line down in the middle of the trunk. And then for Bantia, you feel counter, you join the square hole from that height into to the position there. And then you bring it down for the back, for the back side, the back side of that square. And there it is. Okay. Now you do that. It's it's just that is now the, the drawing. Now what part has been hatched, has been cut? This part. That part is that is the inside. You didn't cut this, so there's no hatching on that side. So if you bring the hatching in, remember now you can do it on a section on a, on a, on 
a 60 degree. We can do the sectioning there. Um, and and, and uh, the moment you pass that line, the direction change. Remember, you've got also in the mechanical drawings a situation where the direction change is there. Uh, because it's one part, because of the plane that change, the direction change there. And yes, that is the, the first part of the, 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 the slide. As I want to say, stay at home. And make sure that you, you are safe. Now, what I want to do is just to give you some guidance of how to to to, to uh, look at certain uh, isometric uh, examples of a full sectional and a half sectional. Uh, uh, of an a, a, a isometric drawing. Again, you must remember that in the uh, the textbook again, uh, the, that there's a half sectional part. What we call is that is a full sectional. This is a half sectional. So this part will be cut out, will be cut out of the block, and then we call it a half sectional situation. On, uh, the, on, on, on a mechanical drawing, it's the same. You get a half sectional uh, view and you get a full sectional view. Half sectional view has been one quarter of that uh, view that you're working on, even on orthographic drawings, is cut out. That you, you already did last uh, term in mechanical drawings. So I'm sure you still remember that. You also did in grade 11. So that on the end then is a half sectional. Uh, um, asymmetric drawing that's been done. You go to a full sectional one. Now, this is what I want to come up. When there's a full sectional, as what your mechanical drawings, you had a whip or a whip, a whip. And the regulation says that a whip is not hatched. You cut the whip normally, but it's not hatched. Because if I hatch this area, it will seems as if this is the same part of the casting that I've got here. It's not, it's a whip. It's a whip. And a whip is to strengthen an area. So that part will not be hatched. This is now a half sectional. So it means it section the whole drawing into half. Now look at the orthographic drawing now. Again, what is this drawing? It's a third angle, I should be a uh, third angle orthographic drawing. Why? This shows it, the symbol. The front view, what you see from this side, is drawn on that side. Third angle. First angle, what you see from the front view, will be drawn on the other side of the front view. In this case now, third angle. Easily now, the layout of it. This is the front view. That is in the right view. And that is in the top view. So what I see from this side, I draw there. What I see from the top, I draw there. Uh, you'll remember from the previous uh, slide, which I showed you the, the difference on the, on the, with the different views uh, and, and planes are like. Now, what I want to say, you must always remember, that is very important in isometric drawing, that you use the corresponding dimensions. If you take this now and you construct your 45 degree line there, and you construct this over into that area, that means that this width dimensions will become the width dimensions on that side. The length dimensions. The length dimensions will be those lines, those lines, those lines, that all length. And it corresponds or correlates over into the top view. Because the top is like a normal plane, length by breadth, length by width, width. And 
length by width. So the corresponding drawings there, what you have to do now, if you draw the asymmetric drawing, is to make sure that all the length lines is lying into that direction, the width lines into that direction, and the height lines lying into this direction. They are all true sizes, except when there's a non-isometric line, a non-isometric line, which I don't see here, None on, and that will be not a true length on that. If you look at it from Mars and that the graphic line. I hope that this uh, very fast uh, section that I did to you was quite interesting. This is now a cutting of that. Again, can you see it? there is the cutting line, cutting area. It lies not on the side. But on that side. So if I take my drawing, it means that the the part that will be the uh, section is this part, and the part of this will be section on that side. You see? I project it over the same distance there, the same distance there. So this is the sectioning part. And there you will see the, the part which is sectioned. Again, what you have to do now. Now there's quite a few interesting things. You start to draw a block. I'm not going to go, you can do it in here, your, your different uh, work sheets that you have. But just to explain to you some, some interesting facts, is that I've got the first circle. That circle, is lying on a plane right on the side. So it's lying on the front plane. Now I project the other line down there. So from the center line of this asymmetric, asymmetric uh, circle, from that center line, you create the next center line, which will now be a dimension of length. And you create your next level of drawing. The same there. This one was now because the block is not cut out. You take this center line, you projected the thickness of that area to find the half circle on that side. The same happens from that. The moment you get that block's position, you do the same, you get the depth. Perception. Okay, guys, stay at home, flatten your curve. I'm waiting for any questions that you want to ask. Um, I just quickly want to see if there's any questions in the question box. Um, it doesn't seem like it. Yes, um, yes, there's no questions at this stage. Okay, then it seems that this whole uh, PowerPoint was absolutely clear for them. Uh, guys, what I want yes. to say again, when you, when you do exams into this, let's talk about exam. Uh, in in, in uh, uh, grade 12, okay, uh, your, your exam is now on, on paper two this part. You always start with question one first analytical. Don't spend too much time, mostly, mostly about uh, 25 minutes on an analytical question, question one. Then go over and do question four. Question four is more, uh, is usually about half the marks of the question paper. And you can spend there about an hour, uh, uh, hour and a half, on, on, on your question four, an hour and 20 minutes. Uh, if you complete question one and four, 60% of the exam paper has been done. Take time to look at exactly what is the hidden details and the sectioning part and that you answer all these things. Pay attention to your quality of your, your the, the line work, pay attention to the quality of the 
configuration of where your front and top view lies or, or, uh, or right view because it will be a, a third angle drawing. And after that, then you attempt the isometric drawing. Isometric drawing about 45 minutes. Um, then after the, the question three, you have completed then 80% uh, of your exam paper. Then you can start with question two. First of all, if time limits, um, do then the, the given views. And the given views is also already or a few marks that you can get. After that, go on until time is, is, is out. Uh, that is the easiest way to get the most out of your question paper. And all the question papers always have the same structure. Yeah. Yes, yeah, no, it seems that um, everybody has asked all of their questions. I don't see any other new questions that came through. Okay. Let's give it a little bit of time. Maybe there's a question coming up. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, will we be doing um, two point perspective drawings? Uh, two point perspective drawing is in paper one. Uh, it's on civil part. Yes, on paper one, you will have uh, uh, perspective drawings. Again, in the perspective drawing, you must remember there will be a circle. There will be a circle and uh, pay attention to the height schedules of the roofs uh, with the constructions. Uh, it can be a, a house section, a house perspective or an object. So don't only study on, on a perspective on, on a house view, but also do it on, on, on objects as well. Uh, question, the, the isometric. Uh, on question uh, paper two, paper two, yeah, uh, there will be circles. There will be a circle. That's part of the exam uh, moderation part of there. There will be a circle on any of the phases, uh, whether it's on a horizontal, or vertical, uh, or there, there will be a circle, and there will most probably be a polygon so that, so that you have to draw a auxiliary view. Okay, there's no new questions at this stage. Um, there's a question that asks, what is the mark allocation for perspective drawings? The mark allocation on perspective and isometric drawing is more, more or less the same. Your uh, uh, question paper is usually divided into, into that type of mark allocation. Uh, the uh, question four consists about almost 50%, 45 to 50% of your exam paper. Question one, Will consist about 15% of your exam paper, and the other two is about 20-20%. Uh, so, uh, yeah, is the, is the, does that answer your uh, question on all question one, uh, paper one and two? The mark allocations is likewise. Yes, she, uh, yeah, the learner says yes, uh, it answered her question. <clears throat> okay, what I want to just uh, tell the learners now, uh, 
uh, you've got a workbook either with these various drawings uh, don't only do one or two don't only do the one drawing that you need to submit uh, you must do at least five or six or seven uh, isometric drawings to asserting yourself and make sure that you draw drawings of, of, of different situations. Go to exam paper and look at what the exam papers uh, has been asked. Uh, you've got, uh, according to what I see on the on the uh, donors uh, info that you that you receive. Uh, you can you have access on the web to the old ex, uh, exam papers from DBE or from 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 uh, uh, Impact, uh, not Impact. Uh, yeah, I can't remember your the other one. Uh, Sakai. Uh, you've got. You can you can look at the the, the, the previous exam papers, and then. Look at some difficult situation and practice that again. That's the only way that you are getting success. Drawing is a subject, the more you draw, the better you know. And a pen is the best of eyes. It doesn't mean just to look at the drawing and say, oh, work that way, that way, that way. No, practice it. Practice it with your pen, or with your pencil. Uh, make use of the, the uh, equipment, the drawing board, the, uh, and you set squares so that you can be ready to draw any type of section. You must remember we don't teach you drawing, but we teach you how to draw. So you must be able to draw any drawing that comes up. Okay, um, there's no new questions at this stage. Um, there is one um, who is just asking if we um, use different techniques um, that we were taught but get the same result, um, will we remark differently? Okay, the technique on, on it all depends what type of drawing you are drawing. Uh, you can, instead of doing a pro projection line onto orthographic drawings or whatever, you can do it by means of, of, of showing and measuring uh, the, the different distances uh, with your sets uh, uh, with a compass or, or a, a, a ruler you can you can measure that uh, on on perspective drawing for instance uh, there is only that type of set of lines that you can do you cannot differ now and do a a, a perspective drawing without taking the height schedule that they give on on, the, on on one of the side views uh, and then then accept that they must uh, they must accept your uh, height uh, measurements on the uh, on the perspective room so you must make sure that somehow uh, some of those techniques will have to show certain constructions that you do you cannot just put a drawing down without a construction because most of the questions they ask you Keep your constructions there so that they can be seen how you develop your drawing. And that is mostly apl uh, applicable on question two and three of isometric drawings. So you see that your constructions that you use to, 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 to find that position of the line is done. Remember on the exam marking as well, we, we mark a position of a line. Uh, and and, and a, a, that will answer the question. So if the position of your line with your method doesn't get to the, the position, then they will have to look where to find it. And if there's no uh, uh, constructions to show it, they cannot allocate a mark. Okay. 
Okay, um, can Elena say thank you? Um, I don't see any other new questions that came through. It seems like everybody has asked the questions that they wanted to ask. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one. I think we can handle some of the exam techniques. The whole situation is just they have to do as much drawings as possible. Hmm. Uh, it seems like they've asked all their questions. Okay. Yeah.
and just get a little a minute and we'll see what happens. Sure. I think we can safely end the session. As I said, attendance, attendance is basically going on. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, it seems like they are, most of them are done and leaving this session. So I don't know if there's anything else from your side. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for the session. You too. Bye-bye.